hello all, hello all, hello all, hello all, oh, oh we just hopping right into it, okay, that's what we, that's what we finna do, they know why we here, y'all know why we here, y'all know, y'all already know why we here, man, y'all know why we here, y'all know why we here, we here to do the interviews, what's up, what's good what's brother, up? Oh, okay. I can hear you loud and clear. All right, that's perfect. Awesome. <laughs> yes. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, uh, damn. We, <laughs> we just like I, I feel like I just rushed into this. I was like, oh, we just jump in, so I don't mind. Um, oh, I know, I know, I know. If you want me to take my time, <laughs> nah, you give me a few minutes. Nah, All right. Um, I will say, how are you? First and foremost, how are you in this time? I'm alive, so I'm good. So you know, any day. Any day that I get to see another day is a good day. That's the That's first good. and foremost thing. So I'm good. I'm I'm busy. I'm I'm very uh active with a lot of stuff I got going on right now. That's and awesome. right now I'm doing all right, you know. With the news that hit, you know, our community like yesterday. You know, it okay. sucks with the it's whole Beyond the Taylor case. But I'm good. Mm-hmm. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, How you doing? I'm being truly. Um, ha ha! I think uh, it's hard to describe, to be very honest, but mm -hmm. it's definitely a. It's like it's along the ranges of like bittersweets kind of thing, because um, like there's a lot of turmoil going on in life. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of good things also happening too, exactly. and I'm really trying my best to like at least at least notice the little things and give give it you know good appreciation uh and absolutely uh taking that energy before i start moving in to handle any uh the turmoil that's already going on i feel you um, uh that so with that being said uh i i feel like i'm pretty okay uh, i'm pretty all right like within within everything that's going on you know like I'm, I'm, me personally i'm okay uh i'm I'm more worried for everything else than everyone else. That's how I am. <laughs> like I'm like, hey, y'all okay? I'm like, everything, everything's okay, man. And everyone's like, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, I just need a lot of food. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, all right, man, all right, we can eat. Um, so uh, yeah. So basically, I would say I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm not bad. That's good. Not bad. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna hop into it. Uh, right. I'm gonna let these people uh, tell these people. Who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? Who are you? All right. My name is Kadeem Phillip. Um, a good chunk of people know me by Life of Dean. Uh, I'm a painter, illustrator. Uh, I'm now kind of kind of getting into the digital art realm and uh, getting into that world. But I mostly just say I'm a creator. I'm a painter. And I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Born and raised. Uh, lived most of my life in like Bed Stuy, but I've lived everywhere in Brooklyn. I've lived in a lot of different places in New York, like South Bronx and things of that nature. And, um, you know, travel up, yeah. So, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about, um, uh, I have a, I have a small backstory, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. let you give me your backstory. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, uh, how I met you, uh, definitely, um, was at this Arts East New York. Uh, art event collaborative. I don't know what it was to be very honest. But it was beautiful. It was just a bunch of art and a bunch of containers, and uh, people had uh, people basically used the containers as uh, offices and studio spaces. I don't know if anybody is aware of what was going on, but this was oh, going on. Yeah. It was beautiful period, um, and this was happening in uh, East New York or Brooklyn. Um, hopefully, they do bring bring things like this again uh where other people can get uh, much more um opportunities and right i saw you there, i saw you there i was like bruh i don't know this guy he got some good art I was gonna <laughs> talk to him. and then he, then he spoke to me he was like yeah man yeah you know i've done gallery shows you know i put on some stuff and i'm like yo he's done some stuff and you were talking to me like like you were new and i was like i'm looking at you like you ain't new like, <laughs> like, like you ain't new <laughs> i was like why are you talking like that I was like, all right, I, I, yeah, but you doing it. I'm like, but you doing it. <laughs> that shit was bad for you. I was like, all right, man. Oh my God, he's, no, but he's doing this shit. He's doing this. Oh, he got that power. What are you talking about? So, so after 
that meeting, I want to say like it's only been uh only up from there. Uh, yeah. you know, your art only has been up from there. Your art has only expanded out more. Uh, Thank it you. It has really gotten deeper. Uh, to be fair, because I I I walked into it. Right. You know I mean? like, <laughs> to be honest, like not nah, to be very fair, I met you and then I walked into your art. You know what I mean? Right. So like I, I ended up walking into it. And I'm like, all right, this is his world. Like this is where this is at. This is where this is at. And if people don't take that time to do that a lot, sometimes it'll misconstrue a lot of the art and the person and blah 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 and then right. get the message. So um I'm I'm grateful to say I took that time. Uh that's my backstory. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know what's funny? Cause if I'm not mistaken, I think that's around twenty fifteen, if I'm not mistaken. That's like and I remember that, and I think we also did a show in Harlem together, like right not too long after that. Harlem. Okay. Yes. 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 And one of them Harlem shows, I think. Right. I think yes. it was a nighttime, like, like body painting joint. I think it was something we had did together. Um, but the funny thing was, that was my first year really into the art scene, because that was um, I had been painting. Oh, I've been not really painting, but I've been an artist all my life. Like I, my mm-hmm. my my arts really starts with like my mom. My mom was an artist, but she never really pursued it. But she had a love for fashion and design. Uh, my uncle was an artist. He was into graphic novels, like the real deep DC blood, gory kind of like graphic novels. Like he would collect the comics and he would buy all those like twit like um, heavy metal and all that like really dark. Like and he was in the animes and stuff, and that's kind of how I got into that world. So I had always been drawing, but I didn't start painting. I've never painted. I never started painting until late 2014. Like okay. that's my first time really painting. It was I'm gonna say September, September 2014 was when I started painting, and I was just like I had always wanted to pursue art. Like art was always a thing for me. Uh, I always love art. I think at one point in like my teenage years, just trying to figure out who I am, I kind of like drifted away from art because I was like, what fits me? You know, just trying to figure out myself, navigate myself. And within that, like I realized like, all right, art's the thing. And I wanted to get into art, but like as soon as I got out of college, it was just like, boom, you're an adult. You just thrown into the world of being an adult. And it was just like yeah. bills and Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I wasn't I it was no warning, there was no cushion, there was no I wasn't living with moms or anything. Like I was just on my own. So it was like it took me a minute to get like a footing on it. Okay. So around twenty fourteen like funny thing was the first art show I did, I actually paid for a spot out of pocket. Um I wanna say it's the it's alchemist. Yeah, I was just like, let's just do it. It was the Alchemist Theater. I think it was on 14th Street, but they got like a whole bunch of these little theaters or like spaces on 14th Street. I paid for a place. I put the artwork up and I had like people come out. Like my friends had come out. But then like as I was going through 2015, I'm like, only my friends are going to keep coming to shows. And that's a limited pool. I got to start doing other things and getting out there. And that event that that you just said where you met me was really like, my first, like, my second or first show, like, out there, because, um, if I'm not mistaken, I did, like, a raw artist show in, like, spring 2015, and then it was just, like, okay. Like, from there, I started to kind of, like, get my groove in and start moving my way through the scene. Mm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, so now I'm learning the numbers. Okay, 2015. <laughs> upon the time all right cool because i remember what i was doing around 2015 um all right uh where where are you from what do you have a background what's your background my my family's from trinidad my family's originally from trinidad on both sides my mommy and my dad um i was born in brooklyn um i grew up i grew up on uh, that i grew up like bedstock clinton hills area fulton street like st james fulton area i grew up around there Um, I went to like B- boys and girls B- B- high school. B- yeah, I went to boys and girls. Well, I originally went to boys and girls for a year. I transferred out, and then to where? So, is you being someone from Brooklyn, you're gonna be like that's completely two opposite areas. I went to Abraham Lincoln, 
So it went from boys and girls to Abraham Lincoln. You went to Lincoln? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, but see, to me, Lincoln, Lincoln is a. I feel like Lincoln, you would get some good footing in, as in like just uh, like a black man trying to do stuff. Yeah, Lincoln is like where you, like I still have connections from people in Lincoln. Yeah. There are like people I know that's like still doing stuff in Absolutely. different scenes now and it's like I still have connections to them so like going to Lincoln helped me because I still have I still know people and like doing their own thing making their own ways um for me it was just they're, they're two polarizing like efforts they like, are they are because, I mean I went, I went to Tilden so it's cool oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I went to told it. I went to told it. Uh, I survived it. Uh, that's mm-hmm. how I always talk about it. But I survived it, baby. Um, yeah. I made it out that first year, of boys and girls. Like that was two thousand four, boys and girls. That was that's when it was like buck wild, boys and girls. That's where it was like you yes. had to be careful. Um, yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean that, that's when, yeah that's when the same time. Yeah, two thousand what, bro? It was oh my god, Halloween. <laughs> I'm gonna let people in on a little secret about Halloween in Brooklyn and all the high school drama. Uh, Halloween was hilarious because at, le- at least in my school, my school it was like um, we were by Tilden was in between so many other schools around us. We had Nazareth and South Shore, mm-hmm. and, like, and we had Mar Levin, and we had so much other schools that we were just that wild school. And when they come out, they were always either throwing potatoes, they were throwing eggs, and they filled the eggs with nair in hot oil. Yes. So that it so it takes out your hair when it hits. Oh my god. It was, was foul. Terrible. Like that people was don't terrible. I, was terrible. I tell people Brooklyn, especially when you was a high schooler in Brooklyn, depending on the school, you lived a different life. Like you're prepared oh. For a lot of different situations. <laughs> yo, yo, you have no idea. You have no idea. Yeah. I talk to people from other schools. I'd be like, "What? They're like you, that, that's regular, bro. Like, <laughs> like that's regular. Like, bro. I'd be like, that's so, fine. Like, like that's it's all like, good. Like, yeah, like just do this. It's cool. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Like, like no. yo, that's not so. funny. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna jump into a question. All right. Um. What are some things that inspire you then? Mm-hmm. And what are some things that inspire you now? Um, growing up as a kid, like, I was inspired by, like, like <laughs> I used to look at certain artists for inspiration. So, I, like, and that's not just, like, musical artists, but not just, like, artists, like, painters, but mostly musical artists. So I used to be inspired by, like, Pharrell and Kanye West and, like, Lupe. Like, that was, like, growing up in high school. And even okay. as, a, like, in college, like, I was heavy into, like, Kid Cudi and stuff like that. And now, for me, it's kind of, I'm a storyteller. Like, I'm interested in stories. Um, I like I'm this. really... I like this shit. <laughs> hmm? I like that. I like that. <laughs> it's, like, stories because, like, every painting has a story for me. Like, there's a story in every painting that I've done. It's just, I kind of code it. It's like each thing is put there for a specific reason in a coding. So it's like, you know, art is for interpretation. So I, I kind of put stuff a certain way so people can interpret it in their own way and see it their own way. But it's really like, for me, there's a message behind it. Um, and really like mental health, uh, the stories I hear from other friends, um, sometimes they'll tell me something that really hits home with me and I want to create something from it. Um, okay. Sometimes seeing people go from like being completely down to being up, that's inspiring to me. It's it's like there's a lot of different things that I see because you know, I see life as life is completely gray kinda. Like life is like living in that gray area. Because everything it everything will pass. Like if you're really up, just give it time, it's gonna pass. Like you'll be right back in the middle. If you're really down, it's gonna pass. You're gonna be right there in the middle. So it's kinda like understanding like both of those areas have stories and like in that is kind of where you can create art i agree mm-hmm. i agree i like that it's awesome it really is do you remember your first piece of art that you've ever created yes okay so my first piece of art 
I want to say that my first piece of art was actually me trying to draw Spider-Man with crayons. That's awesome. Yeah. Like my, cause my uncle, my uncle was like him and like a bunch of his friends. Cause he went, he went funny enough. My boy, my uncle went to boys and girls high school. He went to boys and girls and then I ended up going to boys and girls, but he okay. stayed and he graduated like a year early. But with him and a group of his friends, they would sit together and they would create like graphic novels and he would pick me up from daycare. So I would see them drawing and then I would want to draw. But I didn't know what I was doing. It was not the greatest Spider-Man in the world, but it was an attempt at Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's still lit, though. That's still yeah. lit. You know, I still try. Still you know, lit. it's all in the effort. It's all in the effort. Like, one, I love Spider-Man to death, so I can go on about three essays about Spider-Man forever. Exactly. And I can tell you exactly why That's he's my favorite. the world. But, however, I would say that trying to draw Spider-Man first is, that's already such a great feat that I can see that already continuously, like, pushing things forward and up. So, like, oh, that's, that's yeah. not bad. That's my thing. Lie, I kind of go like that. I kind of jump for the craziest bro, thing. I, <laughs> my first art was bean people. They look like little beans. <laughs> and they had, like, legs and a hat. Like, always had a hat on somebody, like, all the time. I'd be like, this kid look like this. And then I did Vecto Man at like some point and I was like that was like forever. I don't know why. Effective. I don't know why. I think it was because it was easy to draw. But it was interesting. Very interesting. Do you have an overall message to your art? Yeah. Um there's a story in being you. Be yourself. Be yourself and live your truth. Um mm -hmm. you know for a while, especially coming up like in art, you know especially when you don't have a style, you replicate stuff. Like, you follow things, you see things, and you try to emulate things until you can get better at doing your own thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm guilty of that, too. But it's like, for me, I found, like, a story for me. And within that story is just, like, that is the truth of me. Like, no matter what gets taken away, like, you know, as I said, any day I get to wake up and I'm here is a great day. But the story that I'm going to leave behind is going to be something that stays longer than anyone can ever imagine. It might stay longer than me, my kids, but it's the story of who I am, my truth, my story, what I've been through. And um, not just that, appreciation, pe appreciating people living their truth, too. Because, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, pro there's a series, we'll talk about it, but there's a series I'm coming up with where it's appreciating that, too, of, like, other people. But it's like, the thing is, so often, especially nowadays with social media, fucking the internet, it's so easy to kind of get lost and not being yourself and not living your yes. life or living your truth. It's so easy. It's so easy. You'll be like, yeah. how did I even get here? What am I wearing? What did I do? How did I do this? Exactly. <laughs> you live like 30 different lives in like three, four months and you don't even understand how it happened. So it's like, you know. Absolutely. I believe that to the fullest. I've seen it. Um, I have an interesting question, but okay. I want you to explain, I want you to explain some things about your art first. Okay. Um, the first thing I want to uh, go over is Katie. Right. Explain to the people who, mm -hmm. what, everything that Katie may be. So... <laughs> There's multiple, there's, there's layers to Katie. So Katie, it's funny because Katie looks like a very simple image. It's legit a purple teddy bear. Katie's um, a purple teddy bear, y'all. Purple teddy bear, the, the shoulder's ripped, so it's like the shoulder's been tugged on, so it's like the cotton's popping out, and you see the strings coming loose. Um, there's a Band-Aid over the eye, and he looks like he's been through a rough time. Um, Katie... So I seen this when you interviewed when they were doing your interview and you gave an interpretation of what you see, and you might have the closest but not right there explanation I've heard somebody give. Okay, it is a representation of me, but the other part is more my soft side, like you know, kind of seeing me going through it, like the softness of me going through what I go through, okay. but it is me. 
Katie is just me. And that's why recently you have, like, when you see the Band-Aid come off, it's, like, the eyes revealed, the hair is coming out. It's, um, he's, awesome. it's me. Like, the idea of Katie is, mm-hmm. he's kind of like my avatar. Okay. So, you know, an avatar is just, like, a representation or, like, the placeholder of the person. Like, he's mm-hmm. my avatar. So a lot of what you see him go through is kind of like what you see is really like a, another way of me coding what I go through. So with the mis- like the show I did last year that you was at, The Misadventurous Life of Katie. That's it's really... Show. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, it was really like, like some of the, the things I go through in life. Um, like the thing with the island in the sky. That's me when I isolate myself. It's like, is it a different feeling? Than, but sometimes for me, isolation isn't a bad thing. Isolation is freedom. Like, I can isolate myself for a week, but I'm going to come out of that week. I might have like four or five. I might have done a paint in a day. I might have done a lot of stuff, but that's just how I operate. You know, and okay. the, also the thing for Katie is, Katie also is me being able to showcase my, what I go through and kind of how I feel about having to give like a visual emotion. Like the emotion is in everything else. And it's kind of like coded throughout the painting. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. I remember one piece in that show that was really awesome. Um, that I was drawn to was one of the hands. The one coming out, out the water? Yes. Okay. That was that was that was beautiful. <laughs> I just want to say that was a beautiful piece, you know. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you can go on uh, Kadeem uh, Life of Dean uh, Instagram if you want to see more of the pieces and more of the work. Uh, I'm going to continue on with more questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for the explanation, by the way. I appreciate Not it. No problem. The next question I have is. Tell the people what you have because you have a lot of things to actually sell. Right. So one shirt is this shirt right here I have. The Black is Beautiful shirt. Black is Beautiful t-shirt right there. And you can see Katie's doing like the mural of it. Like so he's spray painting. Well, I, if you, yeah, well, I can see Katie right there. Right there. <laughs> um, okay. So what I have is uh, the, it's a, called the Life of Katie capsule. Um, so I decided to make like a capsule, like you see most people who do a collaboration with any brand. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And the real thing is for me to just brand myself. It's just me branding myself. Branding. Right there. Right there. That pin is on the website as well. Go and check it out. Um, we also have new pins and prints as well. And, uh, I did skateboard decks. I did a basketball. I saw, I saw the basketball. That shit was fire. That thing was fire, bro. I was like, okay. I was like, my son is out here. I was like, I want to score. On. I was like, all right, that's it. Was fire. That. That was <laughs> but the idea is really like, you know, when you're an artist, you know, what you do is branding. Like, what you're doing is you're a brand. You're, you're a brand. And, you know, I never went to art school, I went to business school. So I never really went to art school. I never really had, like, formal art training. Like, all of it has just been practice and practice and, like, days and hours put into, like, practicing and learning. So for me, it's like, yeah, like, you know, I have to brand myself on a greater level. And uh, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, I lost my job. So what I was like, I was like, all right. So what am I going to do with this severance? Am I just going to sit on this and let this money collect dust? Or are we going to take a chance to, like, really do something to start moving us, get the ball rolling and building some type of momentum for the brand that I want to create where I can make money and make a life off of it? And, like, that's what I wanted to do. And that was the main thing for me to do was to do that, was, like, start that step forward. Mm. That's awesome. I'm glad you did it that way. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Don't even worry about the job. Trust me. Trust yeah, I'm not worried about Like, there were so many other things that went into that, especially in this climate with everything that's going on. It's like, you know what? I'm better off without that job. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's your favorite color? This, this bounces around. So this changes. 
but that, that's a that, I never even got that answer before. Wow. Okay, that's actually dope. <laughs> it, it changes because it changes. It, it, it's three. It's three main colors, but okay. it changes. Um, red's one. Okay. I love the powerful, the powerness of red. Mm-hmm. Um, green's another. Okay. And then, this is like such an interesting, I know this is an interesting one to say, but like, a Tiffany's blue. Nah, that shit's fire. Yeah, I love that color. <laughs> I mean, nah, that's a, that's a, that's an amazing color. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an amazing color. So it's like, and, and on top of that, it's actually a very rare, uh, it's a very rare color. It is. Period. And the thing they, about they it, had, they, one, they had to create the tint for themselves to make themselves unique out right. of every other thing. So that is a very unique color, to be fair. Right. So that, that's a okay. I like. And I love I like it because it's like it's a rare color, but also like because I I kid you not, for so long I've been trying to get that for a background for a painting, and it's so hard. To really it capture it that. is, but it is, but it is. it should be. It should be that hard, though. It should be. Yeah, like it's, it's a, in fucking possible. <laughs> I, I know, I know, what, I know what you're talking about because I've definitely mixed for the for the that tone and all of that. And because it's like my favorite, it's one of my favorites too. It's like a greenish bluish. Yeah. So like I like when you go in, I like going into the green, and then when you add a sense of, did you have to add something else to give it a tint, like a purple or like a pink? It's like. Top? It's like two and different ways you could do it. Blue? You could do like blue with the green, and then add a little white with a little blue. But then but, there's like yeah, but what you add the what you add the white, then it gets all flat and minty. Right, so that that and becomes you... the issue. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like yeah, exactly that, bro. Like it gets all you like, oh damn, I gotta add some kind of person. I've legit told people the minute I can figure out how to make that color is I'm doing a Tiffany shit, a series. I'm just dropping a bunch of paintings to do, like, a whole bunch of paintings in Tiffany color, and I do not care. <laughs> I do not care. It has to be a, it has to be a variation of yellow. I'm just not sure which yellow. It has, would, it has to. It has, you have to touch it in there somehow. I would figure you have to do, like, a liquid, uh, like, a, like, a fluid, like, Hamza yellow light. Because you have to go very pale and light yellow. And correct, you have to go pale first, and mm -hmm. then do yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you so it's like, <laughs> oh, I've been, I've been studying, bro. I've been like, I kid you not, I just buy tubes just to like, just to, just to experiment. Like I'm gonna get it. <laughs> like it's a happen. Uh, that was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> you heard it. You heard it. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, yo. When I talk talk about colors with people, and, and when it gets this deep, I be I be going crazy. I be like, oh, yes, yes. yeah. And when you move that color this way, though, I be going crazy. Um, do you have a favorite quote? Um, be water, like from from Bruce Lee. Be water, because. The thing is in life is like you can try to go against the wave or you can flow and just form to whatever is coming and just be prepared for it. Um, it but be water. Just know that, you know, it's it's going to flow. It's going to come. Everything's going to change. It's, it's, it's like basically you got to make you got to find your own way within the path. And like that's my thing right there. Is be water. Like there's so many other ones like I'm a I love Nipsey Hussle, like the marathon, the idea of the marathon is just a beautiful thing because that is life. Like it's a, it's a marathon. Like it's a long, never ending, continuous thing. Um, but no, nah, be water is something where it's just like remain calm, peaceful, tranquil, be able to flow, you know, keep steady. Yeah. <laughs> more questions all right and i think the first one is going to be the pandemic revolution everything that's going on what are your thoughts about it do you have any ideas to make it better do you have any ideas to make it 
do something. <laughs> I have I have to find the best way to condense both of these thoughts into like a very good way without taking like thirty, forty minutes to an hour because I can go on forever. Um but yes, yes, for me when it comes down to the pandemic, right? The pandemic showed a lot of things to me in this life. I've been out here is from college seven years. And from seven years, I've been busting my ass. I've been working as hard as I can. I've been doing as much as I can. I um, mean, at one point, especially you, you've been following me for a while. You've seen that I was doing two, three jobs. Where I was working three, three, what, 36 hours straight. I wasn't sleeping for three, four days. Bro, I kid you not. Bro, I swear to God. I swear everything I love. I swear <laughs> everything I love. I was sitting next to somebody. So I, I forgot. I don't know if it's something personal or not. But I was sitting next <laughs> to somebody, and you was going and you was doing like you went from one job to the next one. Then you was counting money on mm -hmm. camera, and I was like, oh. I was like, this man doing too many goddamn jobs. I was like, yeah. I was like, I was like, hey, my, I was like that was like, while no, man, I was still for black man. I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, and that was while I was still setting up for the gallery. So I was doing two, three jobs. Like I go from one job working overnight to the next job, to then go back to the next job to go back, and I was doing that for so long. And I had gotten to a point where it was just like I was moving like a robot. And what this what this pandemic showed me is that one, the amount that they pay us isn't enough, but they have the money to pay us more than enough to live. Like, first of all, minimum wage in New York, if we're being honest, should be thirty dollars an hour. It should not be no motherfucking fifteen dollars an hour. No one can even afford anything off that. Thirty dollars an hour. You you definitely have the money. And like, also, it shows me because I've worked in restaurants. I've worked in retail i've worked in customer service it kind of shows me the attitude of people when they deal with people in those fields because it's like we're in a pandemic don't matter what i don't care if you go to a restaurant i don't care if you go to a store don't forget that these people deal have dealt with things in this last few months that you that may have dealt with the same mental things that you may have come through don't disrespect them when you walk into their jobs don't disrespect them when you're going to get your service. First of all, the store don't have to be open for you to spend your money, which you really don't need to do during the middle of a fucking pandemic. You don't need to go outside to eat during a middle of a fucking pandemic. So the fact that you're getting this should be seen as a luxury. And people don't understand that things that are needs and luxuries, like, they don't understand the difference between them. Like, you don't need these things. These things aren't necessities. They're not a necessity for a restaurant to get you this. It's not a necessity to go out and buy this. It's not a necessity to do all this stuff. These are just wants. What we do need is compassion. What we do need is empathy. What we do need is togetherness and unity and love. And that shit lacks on a very grand scale I realize in today's time. And like the pandemic showed me that. And that then goes into the revolutionary thing that is going on and uh, it's hard. It's hard for me sometimes because I don't go online to, like, stir shit. Like, I, I'll be honest. I'll come online and I'll probably post some shit that's really peaceful or really good. Like, I'll do my art thing because it's just, like, I, I want to put something out there that's different. But the thing about it is when you look at what's going on in the world, nothing ever changed. We thought it changed. They just changed the way that the picture was looking. We thought there was change. There really wasn't change. There was never really change. And for me, I've never seen change. Like, I'll be honest, like, I've known racism just out there covert. Uh, I went to school upstate New York where it was a small country town where I was there when Obama got elected. And I remember all the, like, country kids putting up Confederate flags and everything up there. And it's like... Yeah, I remember that. And it's I like... That I'm like, I remember all of this. So it's like, it doesn't shock me. It's just the fact we have to understand, like, this stuff is taught. A lot of this stuff is misinformation, misknowledge in regards to that hatred. And it's not going to just be broken in a few months. It's going to take years. It might take, might take the rest of my lifetime. Sadly, it, you know. I think, being fair, I I agree. It's going to take. Yeah. It may take the rest of our lifetimes, and I'm okay with that. I'm, we just mm -hmm. have to accept that. And <laughs> we just got to keep doing that thing. I think the bigger thing becomes with artists, like, it's like how I said, there's a message in all my work. Now the message has to be kind of, like, I have to message this into my work. I have to put, like, messages into yeah. this for people to pick up for future generations so they can get it. Because it's like, don't matter what, when I'm not here, the art lives here. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And you kind of learn to appreciate every day. But, you know, it's hard to appreciate every day because you do have, like, a paranoia with this shit going on. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I hear cop sirens. I, I, my heart beats a little faster. Like, I get a little more nervous. My palms get a little sweaty. Like, I remember the other day, I just seen cops, like, drive up and really fastly stop, like, not too far behind me. And I'm just like, like, you know, it's how we already had to live. It's a paranoia. It's a, it's a horrible fucking feeling. But the truth of the matter is we see what it is. And then, you know, like I said earlier, with the Breonna Taylor case, it's, it's fucking sickening. Like, it's saddening. It's, it's really upsetting. Because there's, a, there's already, like, a case where you can see something like that. Uh, I forgot if it was, like, Minnesota from, like, 2017. But there was an officer named Muhammad Noor, or N-O-R. And he was sent to jail for 12 years for shooting a person incorrectly shooting an innocent victim. She just happened to be white. But he got sent for 12 years for that. The cop who shot Breonna Taylor just going to jail because he hit somebody else's wall. And then, it's funny because, again, like I'm trying to hold this all together <laughs> because it gets me upset because it's like, here's how messed up the laws is. That man's getting convicted for shooting and endangering people. But isn't accessory is when someone's there around when a crime is happening. So why are not the other cops being charged? That's accessory. You saw a crime. That's technically accessory. (laughs) Accessory to a crime. So how did the rules change? (laughs) How did the rules change? And it, it's it's really shit. It shows you that this system is fucked up. But what it also makes me realize is we have to go, we have to create better for our own communities. We have to really support one another. We have to be there for one another. Keep this money flowing within our communities so our communities can be stronger because at the end of the day, our communities is all that we got. We only got one another in this. And it's like, it makes no sense to fight and bicker over stupid shit, um, small menial like material things that don't matter once we're gone it's just like yo it's time to really put together into this unity put into ourselves invest into our people and let's make a better community whether it's artists black people whatever it's time to just really fully get ten toes down and really fully dig into it yeah that's all I I'm I'm gonna leave it at that (laughs) I will say that you are absolutely correct. Um, there, it hasn't really changed because it was never meant for us in the first place, in my opinion. It was never meant for us in the first place. If there was a situation where they, where anyone understood that it was meant for us, then it would have changed for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but it didn't. Even after all these years, it never has, and it never even stepped forward to change. No. I do see a lot of hope within a lot of the people that are around because a lot of people are more knowledgeable. A lot of people are more aware. A lot of people are just connecting more dots and making things happen. A lot of people, yep. a lot of people are way more powerful than we was in the fucking 90s, to be very honest. To be very honest. <laughs> like, yep. A lot of black people were more powerful than we were in the fucking 90s, to be very fair. Uh, in the 90s, all we was thinking about was I want to go here. I, in the nineties, all we was thinking about was survival and drugs. To be very honest, but the yeah. fact is, like now we have a little more. We have just a little more meat, mm-hmm. just a little more meat in our brains and in our souls to be like, okay, cool. Let's uh, let's work this out. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's go here. Let's go here. Like people are just walking, doing this. People are making enterprises at sixteen. Yeah. At sixteen years old, creating an entire enterprise off of TikTok and Instagram. And don't yeah. understand how much more powerful we are now. So I do see a lot of hope. I will say that for sure. I do see hope. Like honestly, like when you think about it, you know the funniest thing, especially in our community, is especially right now. I'm not saying this to offend the gallerists, but like right now, it's when this it. pandemic, we don't need even a gallery owner. Like I can control this off of having a Shopify or a free big cartel website, and I. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. 
we can control, like the world becoming digital allows more opportunities to make more income. And that's the most important thing right now is to do that and to acknowledge yourself and to inform others. I agree. Um, I have one last thing to say is tell everybody where they can find your next project or your latest project and where they okay. can find you. You can definitely go to lifeofdeem.com. Uh, that's my store. That's my center. Uh, that's where the capsule's available. You can get the pin like Flash has on. Uh, you get the t-shirt like I have on. Um, I ship out everything. Uh, Friday is the last day to get anything on uh, free shipping. Uh, now, um, my next project is actually, funny enough, as we talk about this revolutionary thing, it is uh, called Colors. Um, if you've been paying attention to my Instagram, Colors, you see me painting a lot of different women in portraits. Um, colors is actually an ode to women, black women, and other women of color. And um, it is spotlighting black women that have been important in my life. It has been highlighting other women that have been very important in my life in regards to my journey as a human being and the growth of me. Um, I chose a very select few to highlight in these portraits. Uh, they have a very special role in my life and each painting has a different story into why I picked this person, what they taught me, what they showed me. Because honestly, in this, in the end, at the end of the day, as even though I'm a man in this, in this country, what am I without a woman? I'm not here. I don't have life. Uh, there's nothing without me having, like, without women in this world. Like, women are a necessity, like, the major need of any type of, like, society, community. Like, no community can stand strong without that. Like, women are needed 100%, and women should be protected. They should be appreciated. They should be held to the highest standard and as a person who was raised by a single mother who had lupus for uh, this whole 30 years that I've been alive I've learned to appreciate women on a different grander level and it really uh, the series is really about my appreciation for women and showcasing my appreciation I'm on that note my friend um, I'm gonna have to Skate. <laughs> it's all good. I have to skate um, for like six different reasons. But however, um, it's been absolutely a joy, pleasure, uh, honor sitting here chatting with you. Um, I want to say uh, thank you to you. Thank you to uh, all the people in your life because I know so many people in your life. I think your brother, you want to talk someone up? Yeah. Talk someone up. Let's <laughs> <laughs> talk that someone up. Um, so definitely uh, I appreciate you and I wish you the best man thank you bro I appreciate you thank shout out to Alpha R Alliance for having me hey, amen thank you <laughs> thank you alright yes All right. peace man peace it's been real I have to go my friend just got here my friends uh, um, <laughs> um, it's been wonderful uh, talking to uh, Kadeem has been great I hope you guys learned something very very special um, he did have a lot of gems and he also has things I just uh, so clearly he's a man of enterprise and please look him up till next time uh, stay tuned to Alpha Arts Alliance because they do have a lot of things going on. Um, I see you, Mr. Cartoon Crazy. I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone that was on the chat. Um, thank you. And uh, ciao.